Welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video, we're gonna be upgrading this Optiplex here. It's a great choice for any person on a budget, any person that wants to get into PC gaming but doesn't want to spend a ton. This Optiplex here costs $100. It's a, the Optiplex 7010. Has a i5-3470, eight gigs of RAM, 500 gigabyte hard drive. But to make it a gaming PC, we're gonna apply some upgrades to it. And the total cost of this whole PC is around $300. So anyone that has a $300 budget, I got all this for 300 bucks. So stick around, and I'll show you how I did it. All right, so the upgrade process with these Dodge Pucks is you have to keep in mind that the power supplies they come with, they are not that hefty. So if you wanted to sport a, a heftier GPU in here, you'd have to upgrade the power supply, but that also costs more money. But if you're on a tighter budget, like I was, and wanted to stay with $300 around that range, you get a card like this. This is the ASUS 1050 Ti, and it requires no power from the power supply, just from the PCIe slot. So this right here, I picked it up in a local deal. You can probably find it around eBay around the same price, but I paid 100 bucks for it. So this, paired with the i5-3470, will go perfectly. This is, this is no slouch of a GPU. Still can push pretty good numbers up in 2020. You'll see that in the benchmarks. So the next part we're gonna be upgrading is the RAM here. As you can see, it came with four sticks of two gigabyte and makes it eight gigabytes. But in 2020, 16 gigabytes is really becoming the normal for gaming. So we wanted to upgrade that. So I just got right here, got this at a, a local um, PC store, paid 15 bucks for each. It's two four gigabyte sticks. So 16 gigabytes in total for $30. So we're gonna throw that in there for 16 gigabytes. And then up next, to make it boot faster, we're just gonna throw in a basic 120 gigabyte SSD off of Amazon, $20. And then of course, just an extra SATA, SATA power cable, SATA data cable, mind you. All right, so let's take all these parts here and get this built together. All right, so the first step, you just wanna take your Dell Optiplex, lay it on its side like that. Now I just want to unplug the CPU fan here. Take a screwdriver and unplug the CPU fan. So we can add some fresh thermal paste. Then just take the CPU fan out. So yeah, that thermal paste is pretty crusty. Now, of course, you can do this without replacing the thermal paste, but I just like to, to help with thermals, and I guess, in the, I think of it, gives a little bit better performance. So you can take thermal paste off. I just like to use some toilet paper. And then just some alcohol. Just a tiny bit. You don't need a lot. Then you just scrub it off. You can also take the CPU out of its socket to clean it better. Then after getting the old thermal paste off, you can just lay that down right back in the socket. Close that arm. And next, you want to clean it off the heat sink as well. It's the same process. Right. Now that you got CPU cleaned off and the heat sink, you can add some thermal paste. I'm just using Arctic Silver 5. Add a pea size amount in the middle of the CPU. That should be perfect. And then just reattach the CPU cooler. A 
Plug it back in. Then tighten it back down. Alright, so after getting that screwed in, you don't want to over tighten it. But next, we can replace replace the ram. So, you just take it out by taking these arms here, pulling them down. Just get all these out. So just take these out of the package. And these have notches on them. Light them up. I don't know if you can see it, but there's notches also in the motherboard. And they should just click right into place. And the arms that you took down, they should close right up. All right, now we can install the SSD using the SATA data port and plug it into the motherboard. Hook this other side up to the SSD. And I can just remove this SATA power cable from the hard drive. Move it down one. So we have a spot here for the SSD. All right, so after you get the SSD installed, next and final part to install is the graphics card. The thing that will make it a budget gaming beast. So with these Deloptiplexes, they have a lot of things toolless, such as power supply removal and the DVD drive. So right here, you take this tab, push it down and out. Then you can take your these PCIe brackets, bracket covers, take them out. And then your GPU is ready to install. So line it up. Take some slight pressure, it should just snap right into place. And this just closes right on it. Then you're ready to start gaming. So let's get this all closed up and let's get some benchmarks going. So as you can see, we're back to the eight gigabyte sticks. So I wouldn't boot, so I thought it was the GPU. So I took out the GPU, and then I was like, hmm, maybe it was the RAM. So yeah, I changed over the RAM back to what I, what I had it as. And as I was taking it out, oh, I noticed this faulty stick right here. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but it is a bit bent. And the dim itself is, all scratched up right there so luckily I have another four gigabyte stick just like this laying around so I'm gonna test it out with the 16 gigabytes in there but I'm gonna take this back to the shop I bought it from and get my money back for it 
Uh, I got the 16 gigabytes of RAM pre-installed in there. Let's boot it up and see if it works. So yeah, it works. It's just saying the amount of system memory has changed. All right, so to test out Warzone, these are the settings we're gonna be using. Noticing this, um, looking at the CPU and GPU usage, they're perfect for each other. None's, none of them are bottlenecking each other. They're, it's not good to have your stuff ping at 100% all the time, but it's nice to have them both being used equally. So we're getting the most out of our CPU and GPU, which is really nice. So overall, benchmarking Warzone on this PC, we're at a it's like 65 FPS average now. 0.1% low, 31. 1% low, 44. So not bad. Still plays really smoothly. I haven't noticed any stuttering really. So as you saw from those benchmarks, this Dialpsyplex is pretty capable for the price. So I'm going to do a price breakdown up on the screen right now. But the total cost was around $300. So thank you guys for watching and tune back in.